Praise God. We're going to have a few individual prayer today as we take the request to the Lord. Praise God. In the meantime, brothers and sisters, just stay focused on the Lord. When we sing these songs, worship and praise, of course, blessed be the name of the Lord. Um, prayer is not just when you go down on your knees. It is confession, it is petition, and it is thanksgiving. For those of you who understand the Bible, you will know that most of the Psalms, they are prayer, and they are also songs. Most of these Psalms, they were sung when they were going through the wilderness. Praise God. Um, one of these days, I will demonstrate how these men, as they go through the wilderness, how oh, they sing the songs of Zion. Praise God. Especially after a victory. Praise yeah, Lord, God. Yeah, um, yeah. Matthew yeah. 6, just verse 1 to verse 12. Take heed that ye do not your harm before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thy harm, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be, that they may have, sorry, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest harm, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Mm -hmm. That thine harm may be in secret. And thy father which see it in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Mm -hmm. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as ye then do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of, before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is in the heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. I put on a bit. And forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank the Lord. Again, I, I greet everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you who are here in the building, praise God. And those who are on the line, accept all in sincere greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Um, we are here one more time to fast and to pray um, and to pour out before our God just to make sure that our vessels is clean in the sight of God. And the fact that we cannot declare ourselves clean because we are not the priest. Remember, we are just like the lamb in the Old Testament in which the Old Testament is a type and shadow of the new. In the Old Testament, the lambs, they were selected, praise God. And even though they might look to those who 
select them clean. But the final inspection must be done by the priest. Praise God. And if there was any spot or anything, then of course those animals, they would be rejected. And so we are not the priest. We are not the inspectors. Jesus is. So when we come before the presence of God, he is the one who do the inspection. He is the only one that, that can declare us clean. Praise God Almighty. Because it doesn't matter how clean you are, we are in no position to declare ourselves clean. Amen. Praise God. Because sometimes we sin knowingly. And there are other times we sin unknowingly. And this is why every time we go before the presence of a holy God, we should say, Father, I'm here, but I'm not really worthy. It doesn't matter what you do. You might, you know, God might use you to call fire and the fire came. God might call, use you to, um, to raise a dead and the dead come back to life. But even at that moment, don't think you can just walk before God and say, I'm clean. That's why this happened. Praise God. And so we have to be always aware that we are desperate, that we are, we, are, we are in need of God, that we are depending on Him for every moment, not just, not just day by day, but moment by moment. Amen. Every minute we need God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so here we are, Amen. brothers and sisters. We fast and we pray. And um, let me just remind those of us who don't know what fasting is. When you fast, you don't drink water and you don't eat food. That's not fasting. Okay. Many people believe that you can fast and you're going to drink. Uh, just because you drink a little water, you drink a little tea or something. You don't do that. Fasting is a cessation of food and water for a period of time. Praise God, whether it's long or short, fasting haven't got no cutoff point, a special cutoff point. You haven't got no special length. You purpose in your heart how long you fast. And if you said, God, I'm going to fast from 10 to 10, that is your vow. It's better for you not to vow than to vow and don't pay. If you said to me, you're going to work with me for eight hours, it means I'm looking for eight hours. Mm -hmm. That is the contract. Yes. So every time you tell God something, you are signing a verbal contract yes. with him. Amen. So never you just go before God, just stop eating food and stay fasting for no reason. It goes nowhere. Fasting must be definite. It must be intentional. You must have motive for fasting. Because every time you fast, something happens. Yes. Praise God. So you have to make sure that, Lord, I'm doing this. You are signing a contract. Lord, I will go between this hour to that hour. Praise God. Go over, but not under. Because once you go under, it is just as if you never start. You sign the contract. You break it. So make sure you don't just go. You know exactly what you're doing. It must be intentional. It should not be by force. You should see the need for it. Praise God and make sure you fast and pray according to the divine instruction given in the Bible. Because if you go and do any other thing, you are just starving yourself. Praise God. So let us, by the grace of God, understand what we do. Because when we come before God like this, and we pour it before the Lord, brothers and sisters, you cannot go back the same way you came if you do it right, if I do it right. If we come with any dress or any sin or any stain, it means that the anointing of God as we sing, as we pray, will burn out all such. So when you walk from this place, brothers and sisters, you must feel empty and light. Praise God, preparing ourselves to meet tomorrow for Sunday service as we come to worship our King.
Praise God. Be, be, be um, reminded that all of these services, they are different. Um, and I must, of course, take you through the difference between fasting service, prayer meeting, and um, general service. Because sometimes we mix all of them and it's just out of divine order. Every one of these services should be operating in a different format. Praise God. Um, sometimes you might believe that coming before God is for worship and praise. Right? There are times when I come for, before God for one purpose. And that is just to offer a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's not to praise Him. It's not to worship Him. It's to offer sacrifice. Now, when the, if and when the sacrifice is accepted, then God will do something. And when God do what He will do, you will know it. You will feel it. Why do you sacrifice? You have a problem. You have a situation. Praise God. You need God to do something for you. Yeah. Some things need to be turned around. Yes. Praise God. In which um, you sacrifice for. How do you do that? Fasting, prayer, reading the word. Spend time before God. And um, you stay there until something happens. Praise God. It's like brothers and sisters. If a woman is pregnant, when the time comes, it doesn't matter the pain that she's going through. She's going to bear that pain until that child is born. Praise God. There are some painful things in our lives, brothers and sisters. Painful. Praise God. And many people don't know that they're pregnant with such a thing. Praise God. But somewhere along the line, you have to give birth to it. No matter how painful it is. Praise God. Do the right thing. Think the right thing. Believe the right thing. Praise God. I want to make the right approach. I'm telling you. The Bible said, God, the burden that he put on you is light. Yes. So I'm telling, you know, brothers and sisters, many times you might believe that the, the yoke of God upon you is breaking your neck. It's heavy. No, that's not the one that God put on. It's a heavy anointing. Praise God. But it doesn't mean it's heavy where weight is concerned. Praise God. What God put on you is light. And, and many you testify many times and don't even understand. There are some times in the life when, you're, when you are clean, when the Lord clean you out fast and pray. You, you walk in natural, physical walk and you feel light. Amen. Amen. Did you know that sin heavy? Amen. Sin heavy. Oh, yes. Heavy. It's a burden. Sin, you know. It's so heavy that, oh my God, you wish somebody could help you carry. Yes. But thank God there is somebody to help you carry. Amen. Jesus, say, give it to me. Hallelujah. Because only me alone can carry the Amen. weight of sin. No one else has the ability to carry such weight. And this is why we burden down so much. But thank God we have got a God who said, cast all not some oh god you wouldn't tell everybody everything no, not even your wife not even your husband there are some things you would never utter you would never release it but god said even that one give it to me i will take it from you because if you have it i don't have it praise god but when you give it to god it doesn't you can't say give and you still have it if I give you this phone, I don't have it. So don't tell me you give your burden to the Lord and it's still breaking your neck. Don't tell me you say yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. But yet, is either you have it or you don't. Is either you, 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 you cast it, you can't cast it and you still have it. So he said, take my yoke upon you and learn what God is saying. Attach, connect to me. Yoke, yoke, two Amen. animals together and they pull together. So Jesus, if you want to learn of me, you have to yoke to me. You cannot yoke to that over there and up there and over there and across there and expect to learn of God. You want to learn of God? You have to tie yoke 
to God. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. With the yoke to God, you will learn of him that is yoke is easy. And his burden is light. There was a time in my life, brother, and sister, I think, you know, Christian, it was so hard and hard to live. But do you believe it's not hard? No, no it's not. But guess what? If you live it, it's hard. Yeah. And this is why I said, listen, not you no, the Christ, the that live, the but the Christ that liveth in you. Amen. Praise us. So when you find it hard, you know why? Because you are doing it. Praise God. You are living it. Mm. Praise. But if you allow God, the word of God to dwell in you, just allow the word of God to flow, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, it's easy. Praise God forever. It's easy. By the grace of God, we will make it. Praise God. I'm going to um, high-ranking officials on a daily basis who kill themselves right here in the United States of America. It's alarming. And sometimes because we don't really look at, you know, go and see, we don't even understand how blessed we are. I spoke to a gentleman, um, and it was Sunday. Was it Sunday that, that gentleman came? That was sitting there, the same Sunday. And he told me 80 members of his congregation passed. 80. 8 0. Eight zero to COVID. Right? And um we have a last one. Hallelujah. And many of these people are close. Listen, remember we we're not even fifty or sixty members. I, I don't know the other but think about 80, 80 people is a whole church. It's a yeah, big it's church. A big church. <laughs> 80 people. That's a huge church. And 80 is lost. I think it's a big church with over a thousand members. So 80 is gone. But thank God we, we are here. Praise um, God. You would be surprised to know the age group that is, you know, committing suicide. Um, you, you listen to my shooting. Is the last one is a nineteen year old, nineteen year old, just blow up eight people and how many more in the hospital and kill himself? Nineteen, shoot, gone. So many things are happening, brothers and sisters. So thank God. Let us make sure, by the grace of God, we don't waste these services. Amen. We don't waste these meetings. We don't waste these teachings. Make sure that whatever we are doing. We do them, stay ready, and do what we have to do. Anything you cannot do, praise God, in your wedding garment, then don't do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because you cannot afford to take it off now. You're going to have to be rapture off the job. Rapture when somebody is cursing you out. Rapture off the train. Rapture when you are running from gunshot. Guess you might just walk down the street and you hear guns start to fly all over the place. You got to get low. You're creeping, but you're still ready. Praise God. So they just legalize, you know, marijuana. Yeah. In which with, with such a thing, you, you, you're just going to know the youngsters, they're going to be messed up more. They're going to be drivers driving all over the place seeing how many roads. We are living in a dangerous oh, world. Oh, dangerous. Just the way we were coming, I saw the whole road block off with, with yellow, yellow um yeah. I have to divert and go around to pick up my sister here. Want to see that yellow line, you know exactly what happened. Yeah. Right? So we just never know. But so saints of God, let us embrace this very moment. God. I mean this one. This very moment, let us embrace it. Because suddenly there can be a change. Hallelujah. 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 And we don't know what the change will oh, be. Glory. 
But let us, by the grace of God, make sure that we are ready. Amen. Those of you without the, without the Holy Ghost in this service, don't allow ask, you don't wait until somebody invites you up to tarry. Right where you are, whether you want to stand or drop on your knees, seek the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Those of you carrying this this um this this bond substance in you called sin. Right where you are sitting, get rid of it. Praise God. Don't don't procrastinate. Wait for tomorrow. You think we have to come to church tomorrow, Sunday? No. You think we have to have service tomorrow, right? No, sir. To get it right. No, sir. One of these services will be the last one. Are you sure it's not this one? I don't know which one will be my last one. So I'm going to embrace yes. this one. Yes. And if God helps me to see tomorrow, I'm going to give him praise and I'm going to come and I'm going to worship God as if it's the last one. I don't know which one. Oh, bless him in the name of the Lord. I've seen many people... Um, and you're going to do something for the last time. It might be eating. It might be walking. It might be speaking to somebody for the last time. But we don't know what, what that would be. So let us make sure that we are ready and right. Is there anything?